um, the state needs to provide you a benefit every quarter anyway. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to do that with a electric bill, that's up to you. But, yeah. Uh, next question on regarding the deed of trust. Uh, should the deed of trust be printed on Robin Blue, Robin Egg Blue paper? No, the Robin in Blue is just to give notice of ecclesiastical status. The deed of trust doesn't need it. Um, the deed of trust is merely a document. When you create, uh, for example, when you go in and um, register a special deposit, you're actually creating a superior trust relationship between the bank and yourself. So the deed of trust is really used for any of those establishments of sub-trusts. It doesn't need to be in blue, no. That's actually uh, a lawful legal governing document for the trust. Basically. Correct, yep. Okay, uh, caller, we have um, Madi. Are you there? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? Going well. All right. Um, I wanted to ask um, two questions. Um, one is when you have to go to court, is it possible that you could have, because this is what I've done one time in work, I had made a fiduciary letter up and gave it to the attorney. Yep. To make him go ahead and do what he's supposed to do, even if you have a, a attorney, um, appointed attorney for anyone in any situation, you can give him a fiduciary contract, and when he don't perform, you can collapse his bond as well. Now you're a bit That's quiet. Just a, you're a bit quiet. Can you talk up a little bit more? I can hear what you said so far, but can you oh, talk up a bit? A fiduciary contract. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. A uh, fiduciary contract. Um, even if you have a lawyer that's uh, representing you, you can still give them a fiduciary contract and let them know what's involved with it. Now, um, do, you, do, you want, do you want me to just comment on that? Is that your first yeah. question? Yes, that's one. Can we go ahead Okay. comment on that the, one? The, the job of an attorney is to turn you. Uh, to turn the liability from the prosecutor to you, to ensure that you accept the liability and you become the executor. So you become the one that puts you yourself in jail. An attorney <clears throat> may, depending upon the nature of the case and the way the case runs, may seek to assist you, but it normally comes at a fairly expensive price and there's no guarantee that the attorney will um, best represent you. I'm not saying an attorney is a bad person. I've met many good attorneys, and I have relatives that are attorneys. But the primary goal under the system is, without a fact, without a doubt, the fact that the the job of the attorney and the name attorney means to literally turn over, and that means to turn over the liability to you. It's entirely up to you whether you use an attorney, and putting a, an attorney under some kind of contract is meaningless because their oath to the bar supersedes anything you do, all right? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, when you go to court with an attorney, you are declaring to the court you are incompetent, all right? Mm -hmm. That is why you have an attorney. You don't have an attorney because you're competent. When you, an, when you have an attorney appointed or you hire an attorney, you declare to the court you are incompetent. Okay. Okay. What What if uh, Frank, if you, if someone else is in a position and they have attorney, and they pretty much don't know anything about uh, what we are doing, and you yeah. want to help a relative out, and they already have a lawyer, what um, what steps um, could well, we take? Well, okay. The, 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 the issues are, if you have an attorney, there's no guarantee that they will do the right thing. If you have an attorney, then you've already admitted that you are incompetent. Yeah? Okay. So that limits a huge number of avenues to you in the system. That means that really you are 
constrained by the level of competence of the attorney and the administrative process that will take forth in the court. And if you don't have enough money, then normally you are screwed or your family is screwed. Uh, I, I really, if you wish to involve an attorney in a matter, and I can't say to someone not to have an attorney, I can't say to someone to have an attorney, it's a choice that anyone makes, but as long as you're aware of what it means, it's up to, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. But I would strongly suggest that they have a, a read of the material we're going through, and I would suggest that they um, think about what they're, they're trying to do. Um, but beyond that, I, I can't really offer you any more advice other than what I've said to you. What an attorney does, what it means is being competent, and, um, and the limits it places on your ability to find remedy. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, one other thing, and then I'm going to let you go off that point. Uh, I was talking to Yoda, um, and one, uh, what I've done, I have two trust numbers. Yep. Um, is it possible? He was saying just pick which one to go with and use it, or would it just go with the one that I sent in the first time the email to uh, the through the email account. Which one should I use? Is it because I did it twice? Because the other one, when I did it, I didn't have a printer. A printer. Doesn't matter. It's time. it's done in milliseconds. If you've got, if you have a trust number that that you are willing to use and it's based accurately based on your um, born date, then just mm -hmm. because the millisecond system created more than one when you went back again, doesn't matter. Just use the one that you are confident with and stick with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Alrighty. Alrighty. Thanks, man. Good on you, and thanks very much for your call. All right, thank, thank you. Uh, Ford Man, do you have a question again? Yes, Frank, quick question. Uh, looking at the SS4 form and um, on the name that you're going to put in on it, you know, I see you got the example. Do you use your full name that's on the birth certificate or just the first name and surname? And also then on line six, it says county and state uh, where principal business is located. Um, I see you got example country and then the state name. Um, was that meant to be county or believe it as country? Um, well, uh, let me call up the uh, form. So I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, talking on the same thing. One sec, I'm just going to call it up. Uh, okay. I'm getting at that thing there. It's like one sec. Uh, For the legal we're going to update this, by the way. But in there. Yeah, uh, so okay. so I've got the SS form coming up now. Uh, now, um, the first question is about uh, your, your name. Are you talking about uh, question three in terms of the executive administrator? Is that your yes. question? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, look, Barry. Barry, examples fine. You know, Fred blogs, whatever your name is, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and then also. And your next, says, next question is um, in section six. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you normally do your county and, and your state because that's what they ask for. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just looking at the, what the example says country and and. And then Texas, and I didn't know if you meant it to say country or was it supposed to be county. Well, it says county under title or print. So under the question, under number six, it says city. Sorry, under six it says county and state where principal business is located. Okay, so okay, county and then state. Um, and then I had one more question on line eleven. Is that should that be the born date? Um, I would normally do it at the date that you had your um, your um, like born record or when you joined um, as the issue date. If you start playing back 20 years, 30 years, you, you, you've got to remember what you're dealing with. These, yes, it has been created back then, but you're setting up a superior trust relationship here, and it really is the date of issue. So I wouldn't be putting 20-year dates back because it just is a red flag for them. Yeah. 
Okay, okay, I got you. I got I would you. Ask, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you've been sitting on a trust for 20 years, why haven't you registered it before? Yeah? Got you. I got you. You're right. right good. Um, yeah. and, and, and then, of course, once doing this with the uh, birth certificate and all, the old Social Security number, is that still still claim benefits off or was it squashed and gone also? With, with I, I, so can you can you go back to the bit on the birth certificate again? Just ask that bit of the question again. Say that again. Okay. Yeah. Once you do the default on the birth certificate, should yep. I mean when you once you do that, the social security number is that benefits uh, like the social security or trust is dissolved and gone, or do you still claim benefits off that social security number? Well, it, until they and, until they dissolve it, you can still claim benefits off the SSN. But ultimately, what's going to happen is that they're going to release the, the bigger benefits to you, which they keep banking in their own system. And then any benefits else other than that, you'll convey through the trust, and so it'll be through the trust number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, you, I'll, you, I'll, but remember, you don't stop. You don't stop being a beneficiary of the higher estate if you're born in the united states you are born to beneficial entitlements and the state and the nation are not giving them to you you don't lose those when you wake up yeah okay 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 right i'd say no how how would you go about using that you know using that social security number for benefits when you got the the trust number and the well, new ss you know okay. uh, ein number once you right what once you have an EIN, then the EIN is going to be the number that you use when you're dealing with uh, employers and other people who employ you. Because then instead of you being an employee, you become a corporation. You're a company effectively. You're a foreign trust entity, yeah? Okay, okay. So, so say you're working for a company that um, has uh, suppliers and it has employees. Uh -huh. Now, as an employee, you'd be using your SSN, but as a supplier, you'd be using your EIN. You understand? Okay, okay. So you okay. can still be employed by your company, but you go to your payroll and say, um, I'd like you now to list me as an EIN, please. Yeah? Okay, Which gotcha, is my EIN. gotcha. All right? Okay. All right. Now, will, will you also in, here in, in the future, like what one gentleman or person asked about depositing a bill in the trust account for the benefits, have that information on how to do that exactly? Yeah, we're going to go through that in coming weeks because I know that's a big issue for people. But I, I, I do want to get the, the background information on the deeds done properly and the registration done properly, and we'll work on using your trusts and submitting bills into trusts um, in the coming weeks. All righty? All right. Thank you, Frank. I, um, I happen to move along to the next uh, caller. Darlene, 99. No, I'm going to run out. Just say, Terry, oh. I'm going to run out of time, so I probably only can take a couple more questions before we, we go. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, Darlene, 99, are you there? Yes, I am. Um, Hi. The question, hi, Frank, how you doing? I'm going well. Um, if you have a uh, already established a UCC number, and when yeah. you establish your UCC with the Eucadia trust number, um, do you cancel um, the first uh, UCC that you have because that's going to have my, um, um, you know, current name on that one? Yeah, it's totally separate. Have? It doesn't. It, it won't cancel it. You see, because you're registering under a separate entity. When you register the UCC one, you're registering as a trust. Is registering oh. that, yeah? Okay. So you're not registering it. A trust is registering it. Yeah. It's a totally separate registration. Yeah. Okay. So it won't affect it. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. No. Then my next question is: I noticed that um, um, when you're doing the process with the ecclesiastical depot and then the ecclesiastical um, dishonor, um, do you create a Eucadia date um, from the two separate ones? Meaning like the you ecclesiastical should, deed poll, we go into... Doesn't need a, a yeah, the deed poll itself doesn't need a date, and the reason the deed poll doesn't need a date is that it's, it's, it's implied that it's the ground zero. Yeah, it's the, it's the turning point. Thereafter... 
you should go on and get a date based on the Globe Union there. Just go and get the Eucadia date and make sure that you include the, the Eucadian 